pure experiences. Welcome. This is the second episode of the interview series for the Pure Experiences video. In the previous episode, we talked about the ultimate truth. We learned that there is an experience, an exper- and an experiencer. That's the ultimate truth. Yes. But we also found out that these things are not separate from each other. So, there are no two. There are no two. No two. Yes. But let's delve a little deeper. Let's try to find out who or what is experiencing it. So what is the experiencer? Let's, let's take a closer look at the experiencer. Yes. Is there an experiencer? Is there an experiencer? Definitely. Who's, yes. gonna, who's experiencing the experiences? Right? Yes. It has to be. So mm-hmm. Can we see it? Yes. yes. What sees it? It sees itself. It sees itself. Yes. So not my eyes? Who sees your eyes? Big point. See? Yes. So whenever you say that, no, this, not the experience, this thing is perceiving, that thing knows. So then the question arises, what knows that this thing knows? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Experiencer will always step back. Mm-hmm. It will always become the ultimate. Yes. There, you cannot escape it. <laughs> so it's not, not possible. Uh, is it changing? Uh, let us see. Let us first go into the... Um, question of what is an experiencer what is it yes so can you find and when i ask the question what i'm asking for a description right in what terms can we describe it when we describe an object we use um, common um, qualities Mm -hmm. like what is the shape what is the uh, what is the color Mm -hmm. what is the size where it is, when it was created, and all. Yes. Let's do the same. Always uh, objectify it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's yes. do the same thing, uh, because that is what the mind does. Actually, yes, right. there's no other way to so, know anything. That's right. So I'm going to ask so, you. Yeah. What's the shape? What's the shape of the experience? So let's go into our our own experience, yes. our direct observation, yes. and check what is the shape of the experiencer that I am. Can you find a shape? Cannot. No. Can't. It has no shape. No shape at all. What is the color? Thing. Is it Can't bright? It. Is it dark? Does it have horns? Does it have horns? <laughs> Is it cloudy, wispy, <laughs> fluffy stuff? You cannot find it. No, can't. It is not possible. So uh, it has no form. It has no shape. Can uh, can I heat it up? <laughs> can I can I you know? Uh, is it, it does it get attracted by magnets <laughs> or anything? Does it melt? Does it melt? Does it, does it perform any kind of action? No. Can it ride a bike? No. Drive a car? No, not possible. Huh? Because <clears throat> since there is no form, no shape, nothing, it appears as an emptiness to the mind. You can see it right now, right here. Yes. That it, it is infinite emptiness. There is no shape, so it is infinite. Mm-hmm. Or it is not even there. Yes. And uh, so has zero volume. Yes. But it is best seen as, from the point of view of uh, mind, it is seen as a space, mm-hmm. an empty space with nothingness in it. But it has in, an interesting quality. What Which is that? Is? Which is it witnesses. It is a space that witnesses. So the experience doesn't have a shape, doesn't have color. It's just witnessing everything. Where is it? Yes. So let us see. Let us explore where we can find the experiencer or the consciousness or the self. So when I say where, I am demanding a location. Always, yes. I am demanding a position. Mm-hmm. So um, let us say it is uh, in this uh, garden. Mm-hmm. So, But take a deeper look. Do you see a garden or do you see a garden with an with a experiencer in it? Garden with an experiencer in it. Yeah. Do you see a garden, only a garden, or do you see a garden with an experiencer sitting in it? Oh no, it's just a garden. Yes. I can't see. We can say that experiencer is this. 
Yes. But it's the body. That's right. It's still an experience. And yes, body is an so experience. So everything that I'm looking at right now is yeah. an experience. Everything that we can ever see is will be an experience. But it video cannot be the experience. Is an experience. Yes. yes. So we I I cannot place the experiencer into an experience. It is impossible. It has to be outside the experience. Uh -huh. And metaphorically speaking actually. Yes. So when we take a look at the experiencer we see that wherever we are it is there hmm. now how how am i so sure yes uh, let us go to the other other place in the garden did did i leave the experiencer here and go there no no it's still it's everywhere it's still it, it's, it's it is there too. always yes. there you go to another city experience it's is already there, there. Yeah. you go to another country so it's still the same it's thing. still there you go to any place in the universe, the experiencer will be there. Always. Now, are you taking the experiencer with you? Are you carrying it in a bag like no. a camera? <laughs> it's no. not possible. No. You yes. see? Yeah. The experiencer never goes anywhere. No. It it would on, be, only, there are only changing experiences. Yes. It would be, I guess the opposite of that can be true. It's like the, ex the body is the one that's being carried to all these places. Yes. The body goes... Wherever it can go, yeah. But the experiencer, it always, always finds that the experience is all always there, witnessing it oh, coming okay. and going. So um, <clears throat> uh, you'll find that as soon as I say where it is, we uh, we are left with um, nothing. Yes. We we cannot say definitely with certainty, hundred percent certainty, where it is. Yes. Or uh, uh, you know, uh, take an extreme opposite that it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it is. It is everywhere. Because have you ever been to a place where the experiencer was not there? Never. It is not possible. No. Because that, the experience of that place will never take place. So what would be the, the right term? So this is technically it is called as non-local. The non experiencer is non-local. Right. Locations are in experience. Yes. Experiencer is not in a location. Yes. Where is this space? Where is this uh, place? Yes. It is in the experiencer. Everything is in the experiencer. Exper everything is in the experiencer. It is not oh. at one place. Yes. Yes. Some people think that it is in the head. Yeah. And yeah, most then, people think yeah. it's in my mind. Yeah, it's my, it's my mind. It's, it's in my head. Yes. But then, do have you ever seen an experiencer sitting in anybody's <laughs> head? In a lazy yeah. boy. It is. <laughs> Drinking it is, a beer. It is a ridiculous thought. It is very it ridiculous. It is an assumption. So the experiencer is non-local. So it's everywhere. When was it created? Was it created? <clears throat> yes. So how can something exist or come into being which is pure emptiness, which has no form, no shape and does not exist anywhere? Yes. But at the same time is everywhere. How is it even possible that this thing exists? Yes. It is oh. the wonder of wonder, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It, it is, it is real, really very, very mysterious. Mm -hmm. It is not possible for the mind to grasp this thing. No. But... The mind always wants a beginning and an end. Yes. The mind is always, you know, objectifying things. Always, always. Yes. And you cannot objectify a subject, you see. That's why it's beyond the mind. That's why it's beyond the mind. But the good news. <laughs> I like this. Always again, the good news. Yes. Again, the good news is we have, we can use mind as a tool to get uh, a little bit of knowledge about the experience mm -hmm. So let us try to find out when was it created. Yes. Let us find out a date. Now let us assume because we cannot go back and you know. A, a witness the yes. creation of no. the experience or where when was the consciousness created by whom and all so let us assume a date mm -hmm. let's December find out 25 christmas yeah. <laughs> let's find out what happens let's yes. assume a good day and uh, let us see witness the creation of the consciousness yes. now it all looks good mm -hmm. till you realize that there is already an experiencer. There is already a, a witness witnessing yes. something on that date. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That means that it was the experiencer was not created on that date. That's right. Because it's impossible to it's say impossible. that 
uh, on this date it was created. Yes, because there has to be somebody there witnessing yes, the creation. Experiencing it, yes. And as soon as there is somebody, it is all, the experience is already present. So this question is null and void. Yes, so you'll find that it is not possible to find a start of mm -hmm. the consciousness. Mm -hmm. As soon as you assume a start, you will need to establish that start, you know, we cannot assume things, simply assume X, Y, Z. And uh, if, if you try to establish it, even as a mental experiment, it fails. Mm, always, it's always going to fail, it's yes. It's always going to fail. Now, has anybody ever experienced a start of their own consciousness? Impossible. Let's go back into our memories. When mm -hmm. did my experiences start? What do you, what do you find there? When it starts, there's always somebody experiencing it. The start. Yes. You'll find that the experience has started. Yeah. But exactly. Not the yes. I was going to say, I, I remember when this body was a child. Mm. But that's already an experience. That's all, that was already and, an experience. And the body is an object. The body is an object. The mind is an object. The memory is object. Oh, and memories are objects. They are experiences. Yes. So... People wrongly assume the start of an experience as the start of an experience search. Yeah. Now, there is a half-truth there. Yes, because there cannot be an experience without an experience. Right. So, the start of the experience mm -hmm. will be the start of the experience. But, where can you put the start of the experience? That's right. Uh, you, you never see an end, and a, a definite end and a definite beginning yeah. of an experience. Yes. So most of the people are going to uh, answer, oh, I don't remember when it started. Now, how can you even say that it is true if you don't even remember? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> even, even then the mind is like... Yes, the mind tries mind. to come up with something, yes. you know, something at all yes. to make sense of it. And then, you know, if you look deeper, which is the job of a seeker, of course, yes. we question everything. Yes, yes, We, yes. we don't want, uh, you know, assumptions. We don't take everything point yeah. blank. It, yeah, yeah, it's We real. don't <laughs> take anything on blind faith, okay? No, no. So... <clears throat> We question it. So, is is the memory absent or is the experiencer absent? The experiencer can never be absent. It is our now established knowledge that the ex experiencer will be always be there. Yes. So, it is most probably the memory is absent. The memory of the experiencer experience is absent. Yes. Not the experiencer. So. You need to sit down and introspect about this thing. Yes to make it very very clear first thing logically mm -hmm. we, we have we have already seen there cannot be start of the experiencer mm -hmm. because it needs to be witnessed by an experiencer and experience is already there yes. this is logical way yes. the way of direct observation that we find out uh, the start ourselves we try it mm -hmm. and you will find that either the experience is, experience is absent or the memory is absent or the mind has still not you know uh, grown no, no. enough, <laughs> yes. It is still not grown enough to make sense of what yes, is happening. Yes, and probably, yeah, it's that. So, uh, the best thing you can do is you can remain inconclusive or agnostic about it, or you know, just use the logic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and you'll yes. see that it never started, you see. Yeah. It never started. Yes, that. So, can it end? No. There is a law, it is probably, we cannot say it is a law, but it is a logical rule that only the things that have a start have an, have end. an end. But since it was never created. Yes. This is something which never started, cannot, no, end. cannot end. Because again, if you use the same uh, line of reasoning, somebody needs to see the ending, you see. Yes. Somebody needs to see. Establish that it ends. Yes, I, I and think this then, is how the mind works. It, it wants a narrative of everything, yeah. always. So, experience and the mind can end, the memory can end, the body can end, but the experience never ends. But, my next question is, how does the experiencer experience everything, experience all this? Very good. It's a very interesting question. Very few people ask this question, actually. So, <clears throat> When we are asking for a how, we are asking for a mechanism, isn't oh, yes. it? Yes. Yes. So let us find a mechanism of experiencing things. 
I, will, I have a feeling about this question. Okay, okay. <laughs> you can see how where it is going, isn't it? Yeah, I can. You can see where it is going. The ordinary uh, ways of knowing fail in case mm. of experience, but we can still try yes. because you know uh, establishing something that is you know is not really possible is also knowledge. Yeah. At least we get rid of the assumptions and beliefs. That's right. Yes. So let us find a mechanism. Now, go into your own direct experience, go into your observation and try to check right now we are experiencing things. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what is the mechanism of the experience? How it is being experienced? Can you see a mechanism somewhere? At least, it's not outside obviously. Is it somewhere in the mind? Is it somewhere in the head? Is it in the brain? No. Nobody has ever found anything. That's why I had a feeling about this question. Yes. <laughs> so, as soon as, let us assume, okay, mm -hmm. let's use the old trick, assume mm -hmm. a mechanism. Yes. Now, the me the me in order for the mechanism to be there, it must be witnessed. Yes. The mechanism must be experienced. That's right. That's now, right. to experience a mechanism, there has to be a mechanism again to experience that mechanism. That's right, yes. It becomes too complicated and doesn't. It becomes absurd. And it be, very soon becomes <laughs> absurd. You can, you know, go up to ten mechanisms. You can yes. go up to hundred thousand. Then you realize it does not make sense. You no, see, it just cancels in, everything. In else. order to have a mechanism, the mechanism must be uh, experienced. And to experience that mechanism, you need another mechanism, and mm -hmm. it is, you know, total. Disaster. <laughs> so, <laughs> and in my experience, and probably in everybody else's, they have never seen an ex uh, mechanism. mechanism. <clears throat> now, why is that? Because the experiencer is the experienced. Mm -hmm. Whatever is being experienced is nothing but the experiencer. And uh, they are one. It's, it's experiencing itself. It is experiencing itself. The division is being created by the mind. This Find is this always this, making up yeah. these things. This is an illusion that there is an experience and a separate experience. Right. They are not separate. But it's just Yes. And that gives us a clue. Yeah. And that is why it is even possible to experience because they are not separate. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is why it is possible to know because they are just one. <laughs> And that is the source of the experience. That is the source of the knowledge. That's how it is. It is oneness and that is why it is possible to experience it. Mm -hmm. If there were two separate things, you would always, you know, need some connection, some link between it. And then again it will prove that, you know, because the connection is not hanging in a third reality, you know. First reality is yes. experience, second reality is <laughs> the experiencer, experiencer. <laughs> and third reality, the mechanism that is enabling this. Yes, yes. Now you will need, this is a totally far-fetched thing, so you will need a fourth experiencer to, you know, to see, see exactly. all these things uh -huh. together. Interacting, yes, yeah. that's right. That's you will right. need a fourth experience experiencer to watch this drama that's happening. Right. And, and it sounds too far-fetched. It's, it's just, you know, daydreaming. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's not even a valid theory. No, no, it's is not. It? It's not a valid hypothesis. Uh -huh. So, it so cannot it sounded, be falsified. Yeah, cannot be proven. Like, yeah, it sounded like when we started with something scientific and now we've delved into comedy. Sounds yes. like, right? It is totally ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But it is, you know, very funny to see people believe such things. <laughs> It's very funny. Yes. Anyway, so this is the answer to the question that uh, <clears throat> how is it possible to experience anything? Mm -hmm. It is possible to experience anything only because they are one. Mm -hmm. There is no mechanism there. A mechanism is not needed. If it is one, what, what, what do we need? Nothing. Yeah. Pure, Pure. Experiences. experiences.